let's keep going here. So I want to show you a quick formula that I think is really interesting. It's called a DuPont analysis. And this is ratios on your balance sheet. But this speaks to a lot of what we just talked about on the prior slide. And you see how the math works. So these are all ratios. Many of you have seen them before. But return on sales is sales divided by net income. Now, you could substitute cash flow, right? You could, you could make substitutions here. So that is literally how much cash flow you're generating from the business, OK? Asset turnover is sales divided by asset. So what does that ratio mean? How many dollars of sales can I drive per dollar of assets? So talk about efficiency. We have a certain amount of assets in our business. One of the goals has to be increasing the dollars of sales per dollars of assets I have invested. That's called asset turnover. That's what this is all about back here. That's how you measure it, ultimately. If you've got a certain amount of assets in the business, you're getting the most efficient return on your assets the more dollars of sales you can drive without investing more in the assets. Or better yet, keep your sales the same or going up and get more efficient at managing your inventories and your receivables and increase your asset utilization. More dollars of sales per dollar of assets. OK? So when you do that, those two things, drive net income, this is that other box, drive cash flow, and increase asset utilization, your asset turnover ratio, you end up with what are called, that. Th this is an outcome measure, which is, you know, the math here is eliminate sales. This is like algebra, right? If you take the two fractions, get rid of sales, you end up with net income over assets. It's return on assets. Okay? And then this part of it, asset leverage, how many dollars of assets do you control per dollar of equity in the business? So this comes down to the efficient use of debt. Right? How, how many dollars of equity? Right? If you have a lot of debt, you have less equity. But if you use debt for the right reasons, you want to try to control as many dollars of assets per dollar of equity. So it's OK to use debt in the right reasons to to, for, for productive you know, reasons. And again, the algebra works out. Get rid of the, you know, the assets. You end up with net income over equity. This is return on equity, return on invested capital. That's ultimately how value is driven. So you want to look at some objective measures of how to look at this. You know, you're driving that cash flow number. You're driving the utilization of your assets. And you're trying to get to an efficient mix of debt and equity, right, to drive the business, to get the right kind of leverage. But good, good debt. Use debt for the right reasons. Don't use it to fund a lifestyle you can't afford. Don't use it because you can't manage your receivables, right? Use it for productive things that create an ROI, OK? So this is a way to look at the. So ultimately, return on assets and return on equity are the main measures of what drive value. But the way you get to them is a lot of activities. You can do a lot of actions to drive these three things.